Hey everyone, Eamon here, back with another rugby video. Um, yeah, it's haven't been doing as many rugby videos lately. Apologies for that. I've kind of gotten to a little uh, little rut with the with the content coming out as frequently as it was before. But yeah, we're back. Um, yeah, we, we just just saw that the uh, new Squid Rugby video came out. I think this video actually came out a while back, but it was like I think I remember reading it got blocked or something by by YouTube or by like South Africa Rugby or something. So they he didn't have it out till now. But yeah, obviously really excited to watch it because we we've done the uh, we did the quarterfinal one and the semifinal one for for the 2023 World Cup, so that is awesome. Um, yeah, we'll hop into it in a second. Um, yeah, uh, I did. I mentioned this at the end of one of my videos recently, but so a lot of you guys probably didn't see it because I know most people don't watch like the whole like the outro and everything. People don't usually watch that, so I did want to say that I I have started reacting to the Chasing the Sun. Um, I've just done the first episode so far, but I'm going to do more. But um, yeah, I, I can't get it up on YouTube. I've tried. So I am going to try to see if I can upload it to like a third party site and then like put it in the description or something, maybe. Um, or I'll just edit it down so where you can't he you can't see any of the episode on my screen. It's just like my face, but you'll be able to hear it maybe. I'll try. I've been messing around with the editing to see if it'll work. But um, yeah, I know you guys have been every time I do a South Africa rugby video, there's like half the comments are like check out chasing the sun check out chasing the sun so yeah, i'm definitely gonna definitely gonna try to i'm trying to get them up um yeah i know the first episode was amazing so i'm definitely gonna i definitely want to actually like watch them and hopefully be able to share them with you guys but regardless i'll watch them if i can't i'll still I'm still gonna watch them because yeah the first the first one was you guys know what i'm talking about the first episode of uh the 2019 uh chasing the sun was just yeah the whole um sia khaleesi like sequence in the in the episode was just like yeah really really good stuff anyways let's hop into this um uh, if you're not sub to the channel make sure to drop a sub we're like just about at 2000 i think we're at 1900 by now roughly so yeah if, if you're not subbed make sure to sub um yeah there's a lot of you that that are that aren't subbed that have been watching the video so yeah make sure to drop a sub and yeah just comment what to check out other than squidge i guess um i have been sort of wanting to dive into like one of the professional uh rugby union leagues because i know like if you're subbed you know i've been doing nrl stuff um but I, I would like to try to do an actual like league so i guess let me know which league would be the main one to jump into or um yeah i think my my tv provider has i think it's the united rugby championship is that what it's called it has like team like pro teams from like south africa scotland uh etc um i think i can i'm able to watch some of those in here in Canada. So if that league's like one of the best ones, let me know. Um, I can, I can start doing some more videos on that and maybe do like a, uh, a watch party thing for some of the games. If the, if the times work with my schedule, um, I know like the time, the time difference is kind of messes up my, uh, like the, my ability to like watch the games live. Um, cause yeah, even some of the NRL videos or NRL streams I'm doing are like pretty late at night for me or like too early so it's yeah it's a bit different but yeah just let me know let me know if there's what I should check out if I if I do jump into like professional uh, rugby union or rugby um yeah let's just hop into this this is a long one so I'm gonna try to uh <laughs> you guys know me I yawn a ton in my videos um it's because of the I have a, like, a light in my eyes and it makes me like really tired when I, when I have that on so I'll try not to yawn as much I might just cut them out if I do because I know you guys kind of um yeah me yawning might make you yawn and then it's like a whole cycle so yeah we'll just we'll hop into it so how did south africa win the 2023 rugby world cup final by squidge rugby make sure to sub to him if you're not and drop us drop him a like okay yeah originally uploaded november 23rd yeah okay this took a lifetime 113 teams were eligible for the 2023 Rugby World Cup. By Saturday the 28th of October, only two remained. Some nations dipped early and others stayed long after they were expected to fall, be it England, Fiji and Wales, Chile, Romania and Portugal. What did I just say about Canada? Canada? Oh, just by shit, shit, Spain, shit, shit. Now, do you expect Sorry. it to fall, be it England, Fiji and Wales, Chile, nations dipped early doing? and others, Let me others stayed here, long okay. after they were expected. Pre-qualifying... Oh, Chile beat Canada. Okay. Four, yeah. be it England, Fiji, Canada Wales, again. Chile, Romania, <laughs> and Portugal, or Spain, Kenya, and Algeria, all powered on by an identical, unstoppable emotional edge. Whether qualifying was the adventure or Web Ellis glory, the ultimate goal, 20 dreams floated through several million 
minds. Mm -hmm. 113 became 20, 20 became 8, 8 became 4, and 4 just as quickly became 2. The Rugby World Cup narrowed down to just the sport's greatest rivalry. South Africa playing New Zealand, the decided journey that began when Aaron yeah. Cafaso played Burundi in the first game of qualifying three and a half whole years ago. <laughs> there was more at stake on Saturday than just a rugby tournament as two nations united clash in maybe the most spellbinding, constricting match of the last 10 years. The kind of close game where one missed tackle, one drop ball, one phenomenal pass or unbelievable kick could define a player's entire life <laughs> forever. A game a where no gash. moment would ever be forgotten and one moment could create a legend. This was Ooh. finals rugby at its finest. Two exceptional sides playing with top tier execution. A tactical battle so tight. Are his slime and shoes look on in jealousy? And ultimately, it was New Zealand left broken. A remarkable, Damn. emotional effort by a truly incredible Springbok nice side playing click. with a desperation, passion, and need to win that went so much deeper than a first for glory, powering them through a performance that earned every single tear shed on <laughs> the pitch and across their entire nation. As South Africa <laughs> made themselves just the second side to ever successfully defend nice. the Rugby World Cup. So how did Sia <laughs> Khalifa's remarkable, truly remarkable team raise the Webellis aloft once again? And what won and lost France 2023's big showpiece event? Awesome. In the lead up to the match, I think I was far from enabling this final impossible to predict the tightest call of the entire tournament. And yet with hindsight now applied, I realised it was never tricky at all. It was the most obvious result of the entire tournament to call. A scoreline we all should have seen coming. Of <laughs> course, the 2023 Rugby World Cup final was only ever going to be a one-point win for the Springboks. <laughs> South Africa as a nation has probably spent the last few weeks wishing they produced cardiologists like they do second in rows, but there's a good reason why every one of the tests has been so tight and we can see see it and how they approach playing the All Blacks. Simply put, New Zealand have been the best attacking team in this competition, making even decent sides like Italy and Uruguay look like rank amateurs whilst opening up world-class sides like France, Ireland and uh, Argentina in the opener quarters and the semi, scoring an impressive 12 tries over those three biggest games coming into this final. Now, against the quality okay. defence they'd be facing with South Africa, it was always likely the Blacks were going to drop below that four tries a game average, but Erasmus, yeah. Nineba and co went one step further, adapting the standard bot game plan to shut them down entirely and wrestle themselves on top in impressive mm -hmm. fashion. Of those 12 All Black tries, 9 came directly from line-out balls sourced from the line-out. Similar to Intro. Ireland under Joe Schmidt, the team have infinite adaptable launch plays. Simple moves designed to get you an easy game line success first phase so you can play more instinctively after. We're talking okay. stuff like this from the Ireland game. Hooker, Taylor, Soldier Spy, wrapping around late with a runner inside <laughs> now, hitting whoever's in more space, allowing them to carry over the game line. They're not moves designed to make clean breaks, though. Sometimes that does happen, just a grand automatic go forward on first phase, allowing the All Blacks to slot into shape and run their incredible varying attack from there. Because what New Zealand have been doing with the ball this last year is kind of genius. In 2023, Fozzie's personal Muppet Show have adopted a variation on Eddie Jones' unfortunately not patented positionless rugby system. The idea is to change formation okay. constantly. Yeah. One positionless or two rugby. managing the yeah. shape as other forwards and backs become... We'll do a quick pause there. Yeah, position... Jeez, posi uh, the stutter. Positionless... Uh, like any type of sport is like there's certain there's there's like a concept of positionless um play where the everyone switches positions and stuff. Um, I know in, in hockey that's kind of the game's kind of adapting towards that in ice hockey where defenders can like jump up in the play constantly and forwards can drop back and fill in seamlessly. Really, really, uh, really good stuff. Interchangeable. To go back to that earlier example against Ireland, a few phases on from that launch pad play, New Zealand go through a sequence of carries to get on the front foot, but running out of numbers, Moonga calls for Will Jordan to fill in as a forward here, with Ardi Surveyor playing scrum half, getting them okay. to an edge so Moonga can reboot the shape entirely because it's easier to set the shape like this from the edge, from the touchline, and he calls something new. Him and Jordan wrapping right round and almost creating a chance mm -hmm. out here for Yuani and Yeah, it's, it's a com confusing the opponent by switching positions around. Yeah. The advantage line, the momentum Momentum tends to just keep rolling and rolling and snowballing until okay. a try comes because Moonga and Bodhi adapt the shape to how the defence is responding so well, tailoring plays to which defenders are on their feet. If the centre on the feet, they'll okay. set one time to play. If it's the forwards, they'll set another. It's, you know, that kind of system. However, if they don't get those first few carries and the defence gets on top, there's nothing to adapt to and it becomes easy pickings. These repeated mini shapes easier to read for a defence than the more standard grand ones where at least they've got a safety blanket. In short, in summary, when it works, it's borderline undefendable. And when it works best, it's off 
line up ball mm-hmm. because that's the easiest time to manufacture game line success on your own Ooh, terms. And so, nice. so much of New Zealand's game becomes about trying to generate line outs and attacking positions. Bowden here sails the ball over the box defender's head, and whilst it rolls too long, if it sits up sooner, they're probably forced to kick this out around their own 22, or from the game's very kickoff. New Zealand run the same ploy they did against France in the group stage and kicked directly to the fullback, half heartedly chasing a bit like, oh no, don't kick it back. Oh, they kicked it right out. They put it out on the full, which is exactly what they're hoping for. And in both <laughs> cases, Ramos and Valencia do. And from both, the All Blacks run a version of the same play. It's a simple setup, okay. but where against France, Barrett drops it off to Ioani last second, who breaks the line. The Kiwis gamble on South Africa, having watched for that and looking for that, as we send it out the back. But Creo does a brilliant job of shutting this down because he always does, meaning they go <laughs> to Plan B. Wide to Jordan, who okay. kicks it straight downfield to Valencia, trapping him on a tight angle where he has no choice but to kick it back and give New Zealand another attacking line out. So, if the okay, box were to be successful, they needed to deny New Zealand two things. One, line outs in the Springbok half, and two, chances to generate line outs in the Springbok half. Yeah, okay, we see that makes a sense. masterclass in doing this following Hungry Pollard's first three pointer of the game. New Zealand land a kick directly on top of Dwayne Vermeulen, the guy who's not going to kick it back, hoping to then pressure the following chase, and hopefully he takes mm-hmm. the yardage off it, planting it on the wrong side of the field for left footed Fafta Clerk, making it a nightmare for him to clear. Fully aware from these situations, the box usually look for touch. However, South Africa don't fall into the trap. Faf turns his entire body to maximise the kick. The defensive line full right, set okay. sends it long, yet extremely high in field. Talea is watching and trying to block Arenza, but he's so quick he just veers past whilst he's looking the other way. And while Smith does a much better job of getting in his way, Aaron just bowls into him, sending him over and almost <laughs> flying into Mawanga before smashing the ball carry of Khaleesi following up to slow the ball down. The All Blacks are on the back foot already, but the full statement comes next. Dutoy makes a fantastic contact because, of course he does, before his tackle assist, Malherba deliberately rolls over the top of the ball here, meaning Smith can't get to it for an extra second or two, giving the box okay, extra nice, time to nice, set up nice. and fly up to smash Ardi Sofea, the following phase. Fori likewise rolling nice, deliberately yeah. into the path of the ball, however, the moment the tackle is complete, he looks up to Wayne Barnes and just yeah, starts so a full Shakespearean soliloquy about how triumph <laughs> as I may, I simply cannot roll away, pointing out the leg, pinning him in. The ball is slow, Bok deep, That's totally awesome. on top, and Khaleesi, once again, tussles with Ritalik, getting in the scrum off's way, and then falling, oh no, oh no, what a yeah, mistake! Right they're like blocking the way lane, to reset off the, the play. left-hand side entirely. Smith can't really go this way, there's a guy in the way, meaning the All Blacks are forced to go open side. For seven of these eight phases, the box deliberately roll away in the direction Smith is intending looking to pass, <laughs> just slowing the whole process down a second or two every single time. The All Black yeah. attack gets zero go forward and becomes incredibly predictable. The Springbok's having so much time, all culminating in Ezebev here shooting up and making a huge Ooh. shot. The All Blacks now having lost 15 or 16 metres from when Mwanga originally regathered the ball. Smith left no option but to just forlornly kick it back to them. This is a statement by the Springboks. Hmm. We will not give you line outs and we will not give you an inch of kick return. But it's also more than that. This nice, passage yeah. begins at 3 Perfect minutes strategy. inside the box own 22. It ends at 7 minutes 10 with Jordy Barrett scuffing it into touch on his own line. What happens in between is a complete masterclass in tactical kicking. Pollard and DeClerc mm-hmm. varying their kicks so regularly with perfect chasers. After Pollard recovers that bomb, DeClerc hangs a direct reply which Aaron to almost wins in the air, leaping amongst All Blacks to almost recover. The All Blacks are going backwards so Barrett kicks immediately and the All Blacks set up expecting another bomb. It's coming, isn't it? Barrett and Mawanga back on the 22 with Will Jordan in the main line in case they try anything tricky. Which is exactly what Pollard does. Calling their bluff and sticking it into the space Will Jordan would normally be covering, they weren't convinced the box will only bomb it. Going backwards, he tries to offload but only makes things more of a mess. Ooh, they just yeah. about clean it up and Smith clears similar to De Klerk earlier but instead of hairing up as Aaron did to apply pressure, Will Jordan steadies the chase to remain connected and it allows Valemsa so much time. He links up and the box start the attack on the front foot. Total opposite to how the All Blacks had it from a situation that Chase aside was identical mm-hmm. a few minutes earlier. The box keep this momentum up over the next few phases before, as per their go-to tactic in these knockouts, Pollard kicks at the apex of their momentum, the moment they're most on the front foot. And it catches, as ever, Jordan and Mwanga out of position. Their kick so well hung you might confuse it for Razi Erasmus, allegedly, both backtracking to try and <laughs> gather the ball. Mwanga spills it backwards and panic in shoes. Over the last few years, the Springboks have built a reputation as a side who likes low ball in play, who like a lot of stoppages because their pack is conditioned for power and appreciate a breather, as we all do. This was something the All Blacks expected to face, wanted to keep the ball in play time higher themselves. This was something the All Blacks were expecting and preparing for. However, on Saturday, the box recognised they'd have a much easier time defending the All Blacks if they're defending them off kick return rather than off line outs, so changed their mm-hmm. tactics entirely, abandoning any usual set piece focus and selecting okay. the team to suit that. There are a lot of worries about the 7 1 bench and how it could backfire on them, but ultimately, Ooh. it meant South Africa could afford a four minute passage of play like that, denying the All Blacks any line outs, denying them any set piece, denying them that possession and territory without having to worry about fitness down the road because mm-hmm. they had near enough a full forward pack to come on and keep those tactics up in the second half. All of this is built off how good the box are at chasing 
chasing high balls, chasing bombs, chasing kicks. If you asked me to name the five best wingers in the world on the kick chase, I'd name you the four wingers in the South African squad and Josh Adams. While Saturday starters may be shorter than Adams on a pimpy, they use this to their advantage on Saturday by just flinging themselves like something out of Angry Birds at the All Black catcher. <laughs> Colby here is more focused on just getting in Barrett's eye line than regathering himself. Bodie taking his eye off it and allowing it to fall for the ever tireless Peter Steph the toy. Same thing leading to this chance for Khaleesi. Just bloom! Getting in the catcher's eye line, a distraction rather than a threat. Combine this with the way South Africa competed for almost every attacking line out, more looking to just disrupt to make the ball ugly rather than win it back, and it starts to have a real impact. The All Blacks had the ball 24 times in that first half, 24 passages of possession, but by my count, only okay. eight of them are what I'd call good or decent ball, where the team aren't on the back foot as they recover it, and hence it's possible okay. to play off without ending up in a situation like the earlier example where the defence is totally on top the entire way, and it just starts to compound error on error. However, if you dig even deeper, Three of those eight were inside the All Blacks' own 22, which in a Walker final isn't exactly an ideal position to be launching attack from. This gives the All Blacks just five realistic chances to get their attack going over a full wow, that's 40 crazy. minutes. The All Blacks scored minutes. points off two of those, but the Bok defence shut down the others incredibly quickly. Whether it's the pressure they're putting Mawanga here leading to a moon howler from him, or do Toy and Moster here alert to the danger to try to catch them off guard with a quick throw. And yet, we still did see one extremely close moment on one of those five in that first half. After a few front foot phases, Mawanga calls a simple shake. He hits Geordie, then loops with Ioani running a great dummy line to take a pop and flick it onto Bowden. They don't make much ground, but four Bok tacklers have gone to ground, been taken off their feet, trying to stop this, both centres committed, and Colby making the final hit. Vilemsa comes up from the backfield to cover Colby's wing, and as the All Blacks play another phase, both box centers are still getting back up to their feet, and just join the line on the short side, just to get into position immediately. Delande gets sucked into the play as an extra forward, as is often his role, whilst Vilemsa tells Creel to watch the wing while Colby's still getting back up to his feet, allowing him to head back into the backfield where Faf's been covering in his absence. Frizzell carries, but with Ioani into layer and threatening positions out wide, Pollard screams for support, so Faf goes, right, okay, and jumps up to help him. Aaron so then jamming into the 13 channel, and Vilemsa taking his spot on the wing to watch this. Except those those two leaping in has left a huge space in behind that no one is covering. Joy yeah. Barrett spots this and runs in ahead of Artie, who's about to carry, giving him a call. Fully aware that both centres, who normally is part of the South African system, turn to cover chips, are out of the game over there. He drops it onto his wrong foot okay. to allow him to engage both Pollard and the clerk better, and it's a beauty. Lands perfectly. Yeah. This ball could bounce in 100 different directions. In <coughs> seven of them, Surveyor is scoring yeah. a try in the World Cup final. But in a moment of universal bad fortune i can only explain is what oh, it bounced. for surveyor frowning at a dog it last week in the or one something. Spot. it sits up for the spring box in the that's wild. Blacks knock over a penalty from this but it's very much three points instead of seven in a game they lost by one yeah, because it is that's the Black attack is so good even the best defense in the world which is what they're up against on saturday night can probably still only stop them maybe eight times out of ten so the more lottery tickets they buy or passages of possession they can play off the more likely they are to hit that triple rollover and score the mm. critical try and so the spring box did everything in that first half in their power to close the corner shop to hide the tickets to get rid of the little blue pen make sure the All Blacks couldn't put their lucky numbers down on any piece of paper but okay. it never count out the All Blacks Joe Schmidt yet to be handed the tactical conundrum he couldn't solve and after half time the All Blacks came out completely different adapting yeah, the kicking game that's to expected. Totally cancel out the spring okay, maybe I'll pause there for a second oh man there's still 30 minutes left holy case it's going to be a long video yeah, so yeah, the, you know, there's Springboks obviously have like a perfect game plan for the All Blacks, but yeah, I, I expect that it, that happens in other sports too. Like, as soon as you get to like the intermission or the halftime or whatever, there's, yeah, their coaches have a chance to like change up the style as well to try to counter uh, what they were doing. So yeah, that, that's always, uh, it's always good. Springbok approach leading to so many more chances to buy those tickets. Mm -hmm. Moong here spots the Lemsers come up into the line to shut up the space and sniffing smelling oops delicious 5022 tries to put it in behind him and whilst the fullback can cover it it's a pretty remarkable effort he spills it on route and has to panically then turn and recover and hit it back opting for the safe warm safety touch lovely touch blanket of touch of a line out but instead of leaning on one of the big starter plays New Zealand from it slap it to Surveyor who smashes it up the middle easy does it before setting up to kick immediately now they're on the front foot with South Africa still backpedalling the clerk covering okay. the wing with Colby in the backfield does a great job of blocking Will Jordan, allowing Cheslin to take it cleanly, but he's still under pressure, soon tackled, and whilst the box play one phase to let him get back up on the feet, he's only just in position when the clerk clears it, and Colby knows that. Not up to speed in time, and just decides to set the line mm -hmm. instead of chasing as usual, because he won't stand a chance of getting there in time. This yeah. has given the All Blacks exactly the kind of open field they spent the entire first half 
searching for. Bowden launching a counterattack and then three All Blacks flashing blind late as a block. Colby now drops slightly deeper in case he's needed in the backfield and Jordy extremely square to fix Vermeulen and Malherva, allowing Jordan nice. to put Taylor so away down the wing does a lovely sidestep in the process. Ooh, yep. Jordan himself then clears out, allowing Smith to play immediately and the other All Blacks to get into shape around them. Knowing how light the defence is, Peter Toy makes probably his only mistake of the game and bites in on Big Barrett, giving away a penalty, yeah. which eventually leads to the position for the try for Bowden Barrett a bit down the line. By yeah, kicking okay. whilst they're going forward repeatedly, the All Blacks took the South African chase out of the game, forced the winger to remain half-dropped at all times on defence, granting more space for them to attack, and caught out players still finding their positions over and over again. After after a phenomenal carry by Surveyor here, Smith once again kicks immediately, and whilst Talea is travelling in a straight line, Arensa has to travel some 20 metres and dodge about sideways a bit and try and adapt, try and work out where the ball's going to get near it, and then he loses the contest in the air. As part of the play, NZ set free forwards behind Talea to clear out if he retains it, and the quick ball this generates allows the All Blacks to play, looking to exploit the fact the wing is on the floor. Surveyor and Barrett time their balls perfectly, but De Klerk once again does an amazing job of just jumping out of line to spook Moanga making him shit himself and drop it for a clear <laughs> chance on the cards. All these opportunities good, coming yeah. because the All Blacks started kicking on the front foot instead of forcing the play against a world-class defence when it wasn't on. Because, man alive, what a defence! I think the moment that sums this up better than any other is perhaps this. Off the only attacking line that South Africa give them in the entire game, unforced, Jordy Barrett has a gorgeous touch dropping off to Iwani last second, who rips through the game line like it's a cheesecake and he's oxen and shell on Christmas morning. Dutoy, representing the professional athlete diet and the metaphor, catches up with him, but despite Fori's best efforts, the ball is fast and Mwanga has set shape so quickly, granting the All Blacks an overlap you can't really see because of the camera angle, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, I'm just glad to be using footage. Now, normally the spring books will have Colby jam in and attempt to make a big hit on Mwanga before he can get the pass away, whilst most players would be taught from being a kid to just kind of back off and wait for the attacker to make a decision so you can commit afterwards and just finish whoever has it off but Colby just trusts Creel. The centre is having to watch both Surveyor and positionless rugby and Talea filling in as a forward but Colby trusts him to mark Moonga as well allowing him to blitz Bowden and Valemsa to watch Jordan cancelling yeah, out the overlap. Yeah. The pass is panicked and Jordan knocks it on all because the Springboks are not only so good on defence they just inherently trust each other to do an outstanding yeah. job. There's no need for individual glory or to make a big play yeah. when you know you Yeah tr the, the trust factor is super important that, that's the thing in, in hockey too like you need to be able to trust your your teammates line mates that like yeah like if you see a guy's open that's not your guy sometimes people will go and try to cover him but you, you can't because you need to make sure you, you, you'd be losing your guy if you do that so it's yeah really important your teammate is going to go above and beyond colby here can make mm -hmm. a perfect read and force the error based on what he believes creel's best case scenario would be mm -hmm. rather than worrying it'll be anything less and ultimately yeah. he's right to do so and frankly he's had very good reason to believe in him over this whole tournament creel was one of just a number of spring <sighs> playing out of their skin on saturday as he has all world cup it'd be very easy to do a full five ten minutes on every great defensive read he made ten minutes on how good dion for Ree was, who is incidentally the same age as your dad, and yet came out of nowhere to have the game of his life in a World Cup final, having come on after two minutes. Or <laughs> half an hour we could easily do on how bloody almighty Peter Stafford Toy was for a second World Cup final in a row. How many nice, players yeah. can say that? Probably just Richie <laughs> McCaw. If there's such a thing <laughs> as rugby values, and Bill Beaumont broke down my door last night, climbed into my bed, and helped yeah, we me. Did, we did a video on Dutour. Yeah, just to prove and, and you get that in other sports. That level of respect doesn't happen in other sports. People don't break into your house Holy and play you like your hair in other sports. I reckon it looks a bit like this. A brilliant line out here from Metallic, and Jordan just ships it on, knowing the box aren't set for defence. As such, Arensa is caught between the fact he's too narrow to run his usual defensive role and just running that usual defensive role so Barrett waits with the ball in hand for a moment for him to decide patiently biding his time calling Arenta's bluff oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Instead that of allowing his salad sized mate to make a terrible choice, Peter Steph the oh. toy commits a murder for his friend, <laughs> and he doesn't even need to hide the body because it's completely evaporated on impact. That, <laughs> to me, is rugby values. And, man, this tackle. While I think it loses something oh, you've cut between camera angles, when watching the stand, yeah, I was at the game, I'm really sorry to bring it up. He seemed to materialise <laughs> from nowhere, like some holy apparition answering Springbok fans' prayer, oh, a man. plague of du toy upon all your hands. Houses, whilst the All Blacks were equally packed with exceptional stars. Ardy Surveyor was a, his you know, usual 9 out of 10, that's just service as yeah. usual for Ardy. The front row were fantastic across the board, and the brothers I, need to do, I, think, I think I need to do a video on Surveyor. 
Oh, yeah. I haven't done them yet, I don't job. think. This extra effort to roll the Orlando over the line and hold him up to prevent a Springbok try, or even the chance before the threat could even really arrive, would be a highlight if not for the phenomenal job he did covering open side flanker for 50 odd minutes. However, whilst he contributed his way into scrum extremely well to deny a single Springbok scrum penalty, a real rarity, and mixed it around the park when necessary very well, the box still found other ways to work their one man advantage <laughs> among the set piece. From the first scrum after Sam Kane's card, the All Blacks line up with their backline as usual, seven in the scrum, Barrett still in the backline. So the Springboks go, Lekker, let's bully the shit out of them. However, <laughs> when Barnes decides that plums are looking too spicy, so cool things a second, at which point the All Blacks wake up from an awful, terrible dream they just had, where they were wearing white shirts in a World Cup final against the Springboks, and they just let them have total 100% scrum dominance for the entire game, and <laughs> Andre Pollard had a field day, and it was... God, it was Cheslin Cole he popped up at the end to score the try. <laughs> Pimpy scored one as well. Oh God, he isn't even playing. With it. What a dream! It was, it was horrible. So <laughs> was they that? quickly avoid the shit stains on the bed and call Geordie Barrett to join them on the blind side. They're not going to risk that happening here. Now, as Barrett walks in to join, Pollard calls the clerk back and changes their call. The box backs all set up differently by the time the ball comes out. The All Black D, which is a phrase I don't recommend you Google, is now missing their defensive lead off third place, and Pollard knows that means they'll almost certainly play the safer option of a drift defence instead of their preferred option of blitzing. So Pollard calls a move to exploit this. It's pretty simple at heart. Nice. Every box yeah, back quick pair, thinking. one running a hard line with the other in the boot that space out the back, with Vermeulen picking and going to create an even number as the clerk's buddy pal pal buddy. The Irlandes line is excellent and takes Buddy, more pal, out of the pal, game. Buddy. Creole's line pulls Yuani in tight and Damian Willems' inward angle not only attracts the attention of Talea, but he then gives him a little push as well. Cheeky. The ball goes behind to Colby. Barrett left no choice but to come up and join the line, opening space behind for a little kick. Aronson can't quite get there, but it's pinned the Orbex right back and from the eventual clearance, Willems attempts to drop goal and after Bodie clears, Colby sends another stunner at the opposite corner, once again looking to pin New Zealand in their own half, just keep them down there, keep those 24 passages as unplayable as possible. Jordan gets smashed by Dutoy, the dictionary definition of bad ball, and as the All Blacks <laughs> attempt to get back on their own terms in order to clear, Vermeulen can sneak in amongst the ruck and win a huge penalty, which Pollard promptly slots over. A huge moment in nice, the nice, game. Yeah. However, the next time the Springboks have an attacking scrum, Pollard seemingly calls the same shape, calls the same move, and the All Blacks adapt, sliding Will Jordan into the fly half position and moving everybody else out one to let them shoot up and shut down this play. However, yeah. the curtain raises and the play begins, but instead of hitting Pollard in the boot, Diolande skips the scene entirely and sends it out to Colby. New Zealand now okay, only yeah. audience members forced into a drift defence they didn't want to be running. Colby yeah. dummy the same kick then passes to Valemsa the final straw to bring Bowden up once again sliding in the kick now an incredible attempt by Arenza almost resulting oh. in a try that would have sealed the game. What would have been this crazy what a if bloody you got that. Wow. This. And so we fast forward and we end up with 10 minutes to go the mighty All Blacks the most One successful game, side 10 minutes. in sports That's crazy. history pretty undisputedly at this point still are baffled how they combat this one pretty simple strike move the Springboks keep pulling time and time again. This time around, they opt to go for kind of two and a half man defensive line to lay it already half drop for the kick. Andre Goddamn Pollard, to give him his full name, takes one <laughs> look at this and goes, they're going to go for a hard drift. So they run it nice and easy. Simplest variation yet, bringing Aronser in direct, squaring and straightening to make some 25 metres off the simplest trick in the book. But not the oldest, because that it gets even better. That comes here. Simple hands down the line in the dying minutes, looking to gain enough yardage that they can start thinking about setting up for a drop goal, which is minutes left on the clock. Easily exploiting the extra man. Here's... We got one of the roses joining their reaction for a bit, looks like. What's she doing? Yeah. Are you going to watch the video? Yeah, you going to watch the video? Yeah, you going to watch the video? Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, go to sleep, or you gonna? Oh. Okay. And by calling hands down the line in a World Cup final, what is this? 1987. No, they're just no, a man up. Because work. we do kind of have to address it. After only one <laughs> card in nine previous finals, we saw these two teams quadruple that count on Saturday alone. Most notably, with the first ever Rugby World Cup final red card to. All black captain, Sam Kane. 
Oh, it was a red card? Jeez. Frustrated okay. with the red card or of the perspective that red cards dampen occasions or ruin games, then by all means, get angry, be angry, stay angry. But don't direct your anger at Wayne Barnes, at the anonymous official in the bunker, I always like to think of the TMO's mum, or at the game at World Rugby. Direct it at the fact that the all-black captain hasn't learnt how to tackle. If Sam Kane went into a tackle with this technique, we would all criticise him for it, because if you tackle like that, you not only look like an idiot, you're going to miss the tackle, and it might lead to you conceding a try down the road. For five years now, tackles where a player Ooh. enters upright and leads with the shoulder have universally, worldwide, resulted in yellow and red okay. cards. Every player in the World Cup knows this, and yet Sam Kane still tackles like this. Ooh, Quite yeah. simply, this so is super unbelievably dangerous. shit technique by Sam Kane. There's no need to take this risk. He has every chance to go low, and instead he stays upright. Mm -hmm. That's the core difference to tackle from Khaleesi in the second half. For one captain, it's a timing issue. He's bending his hips, trying to go low, but he hits just too early. For the other, they've walked in with a technique that they, as a professional rugby player, should yeah. know puts him at best at a 50-50 risk of getting a card every single time he tries this. Mm -hmm. Is it deliberate? Is it malicious? Is it an attempt to injure? No, of course it isn't. It's absolutely not. But it's bloody stupid. Maybe the yeah. stupidest player of a World Cup where Thomas Lavanini started six games. Concussion is <laughs> An existential threat facing the sport and more importantly yeah. every player who takes the field there's an issue bigger than even this the biggest match in the sport and the facts of the matter are most teams have been coached properly to adapt it's five and a half years mm -hmm. now since wales last had a red card while scotland south africa and france have had reds for other offenses but none for dangerous tackles because their players mm -hmm. are coached properly to go low same deal with most yeah. of the tier two nations in this competition there's no excuse for the All Blacks. New Zealand now leave this tournament as the least disciplined side in the entire World Cup, despite the fact Argentina literally exists, having garnered more reds <laughs> and more yellows than any other team, because they, like okay. England and Japan alongside them, have failed to teach their players how to properly tackle in the current climate. I have interesting, them. interesting. Sam Kane. I'm not sure anybody in the sport's history has ever been dug a hole so deep. A captain set for scapegoating, forced to watch the final from the sideline with a camera uh, yeah. shoved in his face. That is brutal. His snot <laughs> on the lens and he's <laughs> falling, left forever with one of those moments that will tragically define his career, define what has been yeah. a phenomenal career. But ultimately, this is the yeah. correct decision. And it comes down to a moment of poor technique, poor mm -hmm. tackle choice, poor judgment, and most importantly, extremely poor coaching that led to the All Blacks, the game's biggest brand, playing most of a World Cup final without their captain. And yet it didn't stop them playing, not for yeah. a single minute. If anything, yeah, they still did really well did, without them. Like they Africa almost won, but... To take them lighter. The All Blacks able to leverage... Actually, let me pause for a second there. Yeah, that's the the high tackle stuff. That's that's uh, in, in ice hockey. I mean, it's pretty much across the board, all, all like sports with physical contact. They're trying to eliminate like headshots and stuff and high hits because just the concussion risk is so high. Um, yeah, people didn't even realize how many concussions people were getting until like recently, kind of. Like I remember growing up playing hockey, so you get hit in the head and you'd be like woozy, and they wouldn't people wouldn't say it's a concussion. It's like, oh, no, you're fine. You can just go. You can go play once you're once you're, once you're not dizzy anymore. It's like that's that's not great. Those chances. I do know there's lots of pushback though. There's lots of like people that don't like these rules, like protecting the players as much. They kind of think it ruins the game. But I mean, I, I'm 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 on the other side, so I definitely think it's needed. There's no need for like high hits in in sports, so work that magic can create a beautiful try on his final appearance for Bowden gosh darn Barrett who <laughs> the clerk is to, decide to create his own <laughs> the first man to ever score tries in multiple World Cup finals and oh, this nice. try okay. is built off everything New Zealand have been doing well no one's ever scored in the multiple that's crazy is clean and more strong Taylor opting not to break off as Will Jordan, part of the backline setup, sprints in to aid the effort by adding 1% extra weight. The moment Wayne Barnes throws his arm out to say his hit catchphrase, advantage, <laughs> the call comes from the backs and Jordan spins back out of there, only actually pushing in the mall for four and a half seconds. That's winger. <laughs> but 
it's enough to shift the Springbok defense's perspective. Seeing NZ's most dangerous okay. player commit to this mall is enough to convince them New Zealand are all or nothing on this mall. So the box set up like this. Three men able to blitz out knowing they're marking one guy only each. For them so watching extreme. But Jordan jogs around late and changes the picture entirely. Suddenly there's a guy they can't mark. Forcing once the ball comes out them to readjust. Colby pushes out meaning Creel has to stick to Mwanga and Diolande has to adjust last second as Barrett drops off a lovely short ball to Ioane. Faf, meanwhile, reads the play and begins to mirror Jordan, but changes his mind seemingly last second having flashbacks to a bit of analysis done in the week, because this mm -hmm. stinks of a play New Zealand ran against Ireland in the quarterfinals. Okay. Off a mall here back in time, the team run a few smash-ups in field to get between the post and last second the backs wrap round here as so and lob it right out wide. Ever since the mall, Ardy nice, Surveyor yeah. has been hanging around on this wing, just, just waiting here, just lurking. The all yeah. deliberately not involving the best carrier, so when the time comes, he can be in position to finish as well, scoring a crucial mm -hmm. try that goes on to win them the rugby match and game and get all the way to okay, the final. So, the clerk so reads when Surveyor this. sets on the blind side and Scott Barrett joins him here, an extra man outside Colby, Faf assumes they're running a variation on that play and hairs it to the short okay. side, has to watch this. This manipulation leaves the box light in the middle and allows Ioani to smash over the game line. One more carry, then coming okay. to let the backs who had to clear out find their feet as Mwanga calls some next level, narrow close. Next level Shane, once again, assuming Nina Burrs had the box doing their research. All World Cup long, New Zealand have made huge yardage off Geordie Barrett popping short balls to Ioani last second as well as using Will Jordan as a playmaker including in the example Faf was daydreaming about 10 seconds ago Moenga's simple ball here takes out the forwards Creel trusting himself to double job Barrett and Ioani but Arenta has to watch Jordan leaving Belemsa with two men to cover here and he's just waiting he's trying to buy his time knowing two passes is enough time for him to pick which one's getting the ball first with De Klerk still on the blind side expecting a short pass the box aren't ready for Geordie to instead throw the long looping pass over the top Belemsa left in a terrible position to make the tackle now and to lay able to slalom in and out of defenders coming across nice, still nice. finding their bearings however the spring box didn't bet on Bowden. It's now been over a decade since Bowden nice. Barrett made his All Blacks debut and seven since he started changing the way teams attack worldwide. The fly-off position forced to adapt to what he brought to the game. And yet the guy himself remains so able to adapt himself, changing his game and changing positions whenever the call came. And this score demonstrates that. Cut out the move, Bodhi keeps himself alive. This doesn't look notable, but it's one of the best support lines you'll ever see. Barrett instinctively and instantly finding the exact spot that's furthest away from defenders yet closest to his teammate. That triangulation, meaning <laughs> even the hurry drop pop pass off the floor, is enough to get him out and over the line for a try his career could not have deserved more. Bowden Barrett retired this okay. week as an all-time great, a legend. Of oh, he retired? Legends. Okay. And yet, I also think he's more than that. Bowden Barrett retires an entire generation's favourite player. A guy who didn't just make fans admire, but fall in love. This final game didn't go okay. the way he wanted, but I'm so great. Yeah, you guys you guys have mentioned him, I, I believe. You must have, right? Yeah, I didn't do a video on him, right? Did I? No. I'll do a video on him like pretty pretty soon. Then he maybe maybe I'll do him next for uh, for rugby stuff. Yeah, we got this try as a challenge Bowden to the Barrett. world to look at Bowden Barrett one last time and say thank you. Because <laughs> here's the thing: from his try onwards, the All Blacks had several chances. He's not that old, but game, his conversion, his brother's pot shot, and any number of breaks. His brother plays too. Positions from around the park, but instinctively, both live and watching the game back, I just feel like the Springboks would have always found a way to get back ahead. Once the margin fell to one point, they changed their whole approach. Once the penalty for penalty suddenly became second place, the Springboks adapted their entire defence. The system remained in place exactly the same, but the tackle choice changed across the board to minimise penalty risk, where previously, the box okay. was slowing all black ball through skull duggery, rolling away tricks are talked of, or the likes of Vermeulen and Foree competing when it was perhaps legally dubious, knowing Wayne Barnes mm -hmm. generally gives a warning to players before penalising them for rock-based offences, so they'd have a chance to let it go and feign their innocence, they instead became squeaky clean now. Adopting the tackle okay. tactic, Wales used a fantastic effort in the pool stage, the Bonks would look to make more passive double shots, one guy stopping the ball has momentum, whilst a second goes in to wrap up the ball, meaning whilst the ruck is fast, the time between contact and ball away is massive, so defence can still fully set. Other than one risky dalliance from Jean Klein, every phase here, South Africa go for double hold-up shots, until it reaches its logical conclusion, eventually, with the ever-remarkable Quacker Smith stripping the ball and turning <coughs> it over. Oh, this all allowed South Africa to just lean into the pin-back tactic as the game reached its conclusion. Suddenly, 
very happy to give the All Blacks lineups, but exclusively in their own half. All underpinned by the work rate okay. personified by Faf de Klerk here, with two and a half minutes to go. Making a chop tackle on Yuani nice. before popping right back up to his feet to charge down Finlay Christie. Trapping New Zealand. Oh, what a play. To the clock wow, what a play away. to Klerk. It's the kind of thing the Springboks did all day, because this Springbok performance wasn't about rugby, at least not entirely. This wasn't about a team going for glory, trying to be the best in the world. This was about something much more. For I don't think you can truly understand, truly analyse, truly discuss this Springbok team without talking, at least in some detail, about the captain. See a ya. man who, henceforth, should be known worldwide as the great Sia Khaleesi. The great Sia this moment Khaleesi. This moment's been shared yes. around quite widely since, but for me, <laughs> nothing captures why the Springboks were able to secure free back-to-back one-point wins against the greatest of opposition. Yeah. Oh yeah, team. every game has been a one-point win. Wins. That's insane. Seconds. Mere seconds after the final whistle goes, after a landmark achievement only previously reached by one man in history. Khaleesi Richie McCarthy. Ever mm-hmm. since his yellow card late on, Colby has been a regular fixture on the big screen. Jersey soaked, eyes awash, unable to watch, tears running down the green and gold. Yeah. Khaleesi's first instinct isn't to oh, celebrate... Was he, was, was he in the sin bin? Colby has been a regular fixture on the Okay, with eight minutes left, he got sin bin. Awash, unable to watch, tears running down the green and gold. Khaleesi's first instinct isn't to celebrate with those most elated, but to pick up those lowest down. <laughs> he holds him. Cradles him. This isn't a hug of celebration, it's <laughs> deeper than that. Man. It's one of genuine love that that pulls Colby back enough that he was out on the pitch longer than any other player once the trophy celebration was done. <laughs> Erasmus and Nina were built a rugby team who can beat anyone. But Khaleesi has added something else, something more. In 2015, we saw what a Springbok team built on determination can look like. But in 2019, and now again in 2023, we've seen a team built on something much greater. <laughs> the name Sam Tanda roughly translates to we love him and whilst it couldn't be more true i think that title only begins to sum up what sia means to south africa and brought to this team you can motivate a side yeah. motivate a person based on shame based on anger for a little while you can motivate a person by looking to prove doubt is wrong or become the best in the world to reach full potential for quite a while but when a person is motivated by love for the people around them mm-hmm. i believe there's no barriers they can't overcome and no limit to how far they can go or how long and hard they'll fight. The name Siam Tanda roughly translates to we love him, but that love goes both ways. Siam Tanda. Sia Khaleesi, in a way beyond Mm -hmm. every other captain in the game, glows with love for every single one of his teammates. He loves, he cares, and he would die without a second thought for all of them. Maybe Ibn Ezebeth can be taken to another level by making him angry, but there isn't a human <laughs> being on this planet who wouldn't play and give everything for Sia Khaleesi if he took you in. Because mm-hmm. he leads not by words, but by emotion and by action. By the way he plays, yes, but by comforting Colby, by letting Fori continue leading, being the guy talking to the referee when he returns from the Simbin period, by bounding out the tongue at the end of the Mika concert, not with a steely focus, but excitement and energy to play with the guys he loves so much, and for the nation he deeply cares about. I said in my preview of this game, if the Springboks win on Saturday, Sia Khaleesi deserves to be remembered as the greatest captain in the history of the game. The truth is, even if the Springboks had lost, for me, his status in that spot was never under threat. Even if we put his remarkable life in the background, other captains may have their strengths and achievements that should not be sniffed at, but Sia Khaleesi brought an unstoppable emotional edge that transformed his team into more and gave his nation hope. This is a team united in a way few in the history of the sport ever have been, because their captain went through the unimaginable and chose to fight... For something better yeah like, like i said in the intro I, I watched the first episode of chasing the sun and yeah the, the whole the whole sea khaleesi like segment was like insane like the where the commentator is like talking about what he means to to like south africa and and all that like it, it was a cra- crazy moment as he's like entering the stadium like that whole sequence was just like i got so many chills it was wild yeah, I, re- I really hope I can try to get some of that reaction up on, up on YouTube for you guys. And always be better. He doesn't shout or scream. He leads with a kindness forged 
over a long life of seeing the opposite and knowing the thing that got him through those days was empathy and hope. Mm -hmm. 113 teams were eligible for the 2023 Rugby World Cup and ultimately only one stands victorious. And it feels fitting. Fiji, Portugal, Argentina, England, Chile, Wales, Algeria, Kenya, Spain. Mm -hmm. The teams who really transformed this tournament and its lead-in, the sides who performed above expectations are, across the board, in every single example, those who played with hope and with love, rather than with steel or with fear. And so to see Sia Khaleesi, a man who embodies the dream, who came from the most unimaginable poverty, the most hopeless situation, and rose slowly to become a titan, not through his physicality or his gritted teeth, but through his willingness to empathise and understand others, and then work harder for what he's learnt and who he now has to fight for. A man mm-hmm. who learnt resilience from the most impossible, horrible places, and grew from every mistake he ever made, and a man who deserves to be remembered for so long as this game is played, at a minimum, lift the sport's ultimate prize for a historic second time, feels... Fitting, perfect, and just. There are a (laughs) dozen players in South Africa who could have capped in the box at this Rugby World Cup, but there is not another player in the history of the game who could have got the sheer depth of emotional performance out of his team that Sia did. Bonds built over his six years of captain, now even greater than they were when they won the World Cup in 2019. Fires forged in the toughest times, creating... Those one point wins, creating yeah. desperate tackles by Arendt, insanely double won three in a row by one mighty point. Mighty hits by Dutoy. Because ultimately, this took a lifetime. Yeah. Wow. All right. Is it the end? Thank you for watching. Yeah, that looks like the end. Is there more? No, it's just like an outro you know said hi even you know the guy yeah. all right all right yeah so that, that was squidge's video on how south africa won the world cup final in 2023 yeah awesome video as expected like i mean as with all of these I, I probably didn't say that much because it's there's so much info i'm taking in while i'm watching it because yeah like it's 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 a lot of info and you, you guys always joke that he talks really fast but um no i'm really under, like starting to understand like how um, not not really understanding how like just like ta- there's so many tactics and stuff and teams change up their styles constantly to like mimic or to like yeah, get advantage over the other team obviously and all that um yeah just an, just an awesome awesome video um yeah make make sure to sub to squidge if you're not like his video um yeah like he's he's like the best he's the best rugby youtuber we, we've we've come across so far so yeah make sure to make sure to sub if you're not um yeah, so what what can I take away from that that I um hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. It was it was just an awesome video. Like there's there's so many little things that like the teams are, are changing up. Like the All Blacks seem to like adjust really well in the second half, but it, it just wasn't enough to to like get get the last extra points they needed. Um it looked like Colby Colby in the last ten minutes got Sinbind, so they were playing down a man for the last ten minutes. That must have been insane to watch live with with the with the team down a man, like only up by one point. That, that's crazy that they managed to defend uh, for that long, I guess, without him. Um, and yeah, this the whole Sia Khaleesi thing is just, yeah, just like the ultimate captain. There's there's not many guys like him across any sports. Like there's there's always, like each sport kind of has like their lead, like the guy that's like known as like the best leader of all time. And it looks like he's going to be pretty much considered that just in term, even just in terms of like, He's obviously a great leader on the field and stuff, but like just how much he means to like the country, like this specific cir- circumstances led to him like being so important um, with all that was going on in South Africa and all that. So really brought the team together and like the, the country together, I guess, um, having him there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, this video is like, like really really long so i'm gonna wrap it up i guess pretty quickly but yeah like i was saying in the intro i do have some chasing the sun reactions that i'm trying to get up um we'll see what i end up doing um let me know yeah let me, let me just let me know i'm gonna i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to get them we'll, we'll see um yeah yeah if you enjoyed my reaction make sure to drop a sub drop a like on the video comment which check out next um i am slowing down a bit with the rugby like if you've been sub for a while, you know I was I was doing like two rugby videos a day for like a month straight, and it kind of 
I got a little burnt out just doing like, yeah, I got a little burnt out doing that. So doing more like, I'm just still making a couple of videos a day, or I'm gonna try to, but they're gonna be spread out across different sports now. So won't be as many rugby videos as I was doing originally, but um, definitely gonna keep, try to get at least like three rugby videos up a week, ideally. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I mentioned in the intro too about like uh, looking into some pro rugby, uh, rugby leagues. Um, yeah, let me know which one is like the best one to look at if I was going to uh, look into one. I mean, ideally one that's maybe going on right now would be good. Um, I'm not sure actually when. I, I'd assume, yeah, I'd assume rugby's played more during the spring summer um, time instead of winter, but. I, lots of stadiums are indoors nowadays, so it probably doesn't really matter when it's played. Um, but yeah, let's just end it there. Crazy long video, probably the longest video I've done. So yeah, we'll end it there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, everyone.